Hey guys, it's me, your favorite dog host, Parker, here to introduce you to the first episode of Fast Pass Facts Presents. So let's go back to 1990 when Jack Lindquist was president of Disneyland and he came up with the idea of creating a second Disney park in California to attract more guests and extend their visit to the Disneyland Resort. By then, Disney had already acquired the Disneyland Hotel after buying the Rather Corporation, the company that owned it. And at the time, the Rather Corporation also managed and operated the Queen Mary Ocean Liner, so Disney got permission to operate it also. Why is this important? Because Disney had two options. Option number one, create a West Coast version of Epcot named Westcott that would be located in the parking lot area. Option number two, create a nautical park located in Long Beach called Disney Sea using the Queen Mary as a backdrop. Disney opted for option number one and went ahead with the development of Westcott because they thought that having a second park that far from Disneyland was not such a great idea after all. At the same time, the Oriental Land Company, who owns the Disney Tokyo Resort, saw the plans for Disney Sea and liked the idea so much that they decided to build the park as a companion to Tokyo Disneyland at the Tokyo Disneyland Resort. Everything was going fine until Euro Disney's failure caused Westcott's plans to fall apart and be cancelled. The problem was that even though Disney wouldn't be able to make Westcott a reality, they still needed an expansion for the Disneyland Resort. And here's where Michael Eisner comes in. We all know that after Euro Disney's failure, Michael Eisner changed and became a little more wary of the things the company wanted to create. So he decided to build an expansion in the old parking lot where Westcott was also planned to be, but with less budget than the $3 billion that Westcott was expected to cost. And so, to come up with the concept of this new expansion, Eisner held a three-day brainstorming getaway in Aspen, Colorado, where he and his team of Disney Imagineers and executives came up with the idea of Disney's California Adventure, a park that would showcase and celebrate all of California, and the best part was that it could be built for $615 million instead of the $3 billion price tag for Westcott. The problem was that not everybody was happy with the announcement. Critics thought that it was not a great idea to build a park about California in California when you could have the real thing at your doorstep. And when you add that to the rumor that had been floating around Disney websites that said Eisner and the Imagineers were only buying off-the-shelf rides from other companies and sprucing them up with a few Disney flourishes, things were not looking good for the park. Disney's California Adventure opened its doors on February 8, 2001, and of course things didn't go as planned. The mind-blowing crowds that should have been there were nowhere in sight. And to top it off, the media and the guests' reviews were awful. They complained about the redundant California theme, the lack of rides for young children, the lack of e-ticket attractions, and more importantly, the lack of a Disney theme. And this was not surprising. Let's take a look at everything that went wrong. For starters, most, if not all, attractions were lacking that special Disney magic that every Disney park is used to having. There were lots of generic, off-the-shelf rides like it was rumored and other weird rides like this bizarre nightmare called Superstar Limo. This attraction was a dark ride that took guests through a cartoony rendition of Hollywood and introduced them to animated figures modeled in the likeness of many celebrities. A stereotypical Hollywood talent agent named Swiftly the Rue appeared infrequently on small in-seat video screens, reminding the writers not to be late to their movie premiere. Just look at this dude. Really. And not only that, but many of the rest of the attractions were pretty… boring. Take a look at Bountiful Valley Farm. Instead of being an attraction, it was more of an exhibition where visitors could walk through fields of real orange trees, stumble across cow statues, learn about irrigation systems, and visit the Caterpillar Tractor Exhibit where they could learn how Caterpillar tractors help farmers. It was a little interesting and all, but it's not something anyone would expect from a Disney park. So guests started complaining. 
Why would they have to pay the same admission price for Disney's California Adventure as for Disneyland when it didn't hold up to Disney standards? So Disney knew they had to do something. The first change Disney made came in 2002 and was A Bug's Land. And while this eliminated the need for more rides for young children and gave the park a little more of a Disney feel, it still couldn't compare to many of Fantasyland's dark rides. Next, in 2004, came the first e-ticket attraction in the park, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, which was an immediate success. And then, on March 13, 2005, Disney announced that Bob Iger would succeed Michael Eisner as CEO, and with this change came a complete overhaul in the park. It first started in 2006, Monsters, Inc., Mike and Silly to the rescue, which replaced the awful Superstar Limo that was actually closed within the first year the park opened. This was a pretty good change, but Iger knew there was much more to be done, so on October 17, 2007, he announced a multi-year $1.1 billion expansion for Disney's California Adventure. Each district was reimagined to transform the park from a spoof of modern California culture to a romanticized, idealized version of the state exploring specific time periods and historic settings. The project began in December 2007 and was completed in stages. Toy Story Midway Mania opened on Paradise Pier in June 2008. World of Color, a nighttime water and light show on Paradise Bay, opened in June 2010, and The Little Mermaid Ariel's Undersea Adventure opened on the site formerly occupied by the Golden Dreams Theater in June 2011. The most drastic changes to the park included a complete overhaul of the main entrance, Sunshine Plaza, and Paradise Pier. The main entrance and Sunshine Plaza were turned from a giant postcard spoof of California into Buena Vista Street, a representation of Los Angeles as it appeared when Walt Disney moved there in the 1920s. The California sign in front was removed and donated to Cal Expo in Sacramento. Paradise Pier was turned from a contemporary representation of California boardwalks into a representation of Victorian seaside amusement parks of the 1920s, and some of the area's off-the-shelf rides were either removed outright like the Mally Boomer or rethemed to have more of a focus on Disney characters like Mickey's Fun Wheel, Goofy's Sky School, or Silly Symphony Swings, Cars Land, an area that simulates Radiator Springs from Disney Pixar's Cars film franchise, was added to the park and features three rides, including the E-Ticket Radiator Springs Racers. Construction was completed in 2012 and the park was then rededicated on June 14, 2012. The park's name was also changed from Disney's California Adventure to Disney California Adventure and got a new logo. With all of these changes, the park's attendance rates increased like crazy. In 2012, Disney California Adventure reached a record high for the park of over 7 million visitors, a number Disney had hoped the park would have in its first year. Also, the day of the park's rededication, it had a record number of 43,000 visitors in one day. Disney California Adventure is now one of guests' favorite parks, and for the looks of it, the park is still going to be in constant change. With Pixar Pier opening this summer and Marvel Land replacing A Bug's Land, it looks like Disney is working hard to keep the park as one of the guests' favorites forever. Do you miss Disney's California Adventure? What do you think of every modification that was made? Let us know in the comments. We relaunched our Patreon page, so please go check it out and see all of the new rewards that we have for you. And coming up next week, 